What's going on, guys? What's going on, guys? Testing, testing. What's going on, guys? What's going on, guys? Testing, testing levels. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Was just getting my microphone set up. Uh, things look good now. I was accidentally broadcasting my opening there without any sound. Bit of a mistake. All right. We have it back now, though. So what's going on, guys? This is going to be the finals of the UK Online League that was played sometime earlier. Uh, it's a little bit after the league was played. You know, the second league has, in fact, already started. But this is the uh, finals of the first one. I have a recording of it. Um, last Thursday for my scheduled stream, I showed you the semifinals with myself on Warrior versus Big Medsy on Ninja. And now we have the finals with myself on Warrior versus Slidemo on Warrior. So this should be a interesting game, Warrior Mirror. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get right to it. So a little overview of the, uh, a little overview of this matchup. Warrior versus Warrior. Uh, Dorinthia Mirror, it's it's kind of interesting because Warrior typically wants to be the aggressor, but um, when you have to face another Warrior, you often end up putting more defense into your deck to try to deal with their own aggression, so the deck ends up being a little slower, and it's more of a mid-range type game instead of a pure aggro one. So Slidemo here wins the roll-off. Uh, typically, I consider going second in this matchup to be stronger. Uh, the reason that I say that is that the... Um, the player who is going second is going to have the first chance to do like a main attack. Now, when I sideboard for this matchup, I like to put a lot of defense into my deck. Uh, as I was mentioning, trying to slow down my opponent's uh, trying to slow down my opponent's aggression. So, having I'm having a few little problems with Tabletop Simulator. Both of us are are wheel are. Uh, Wielding the same equipment here, the Arcanite Skullcap, uh, Fyndal Spring Tunic, Brave Forge Bracers, and Refraction Bolters, and that's a fairly standard loadout for the. Um, that's a fairly standard loadout for the Warrior Mirror, um, and really, actually, for almost all matchups as Warrior, this is what you typically want to have equipped. The Arcanite Skullcap you're going to swap out if you're in a matchup that has a. Uh, you're, if you're in a matchup that has a lot more of the magic damage or actually any magic damage at all ironically you want to remove the arcanite skullcap when dealing with arcane damage because it only gives you arcane barrier when you're lower on life than your opponent and it also gives you arcane barrier three which is not necessarily the most efficient so in those in the actual rune blade and wizard matchups where you need the arcane barrier you're probably going to want to equip a null rune hood instead uh, just the Null Rune Hood against the Rune Blade and against Wizard, I do also put on the Null Rune Gloves. Okay, so I had to go first, and I decided to just Arsenal and pass. And so the reason that I was doing that is pretty simple. Um, if I attack into my opponent, he essentially gets a free mulligan. Because me attacking into his uh, me attacking into his defense, he can block with as many cards as he wants and then refill his hand. We're not playing for fatigue, so I'm not hoping to make him lose cards from hand. Additionally, he could potentially like block with a card that blocks for two, take one damage, and then on his turn, go in with scar for a scar, which would now have go again. So by doing it this way and preventing him from doing that, he pitches a blue shunt and swings a dumb blade swing with nothing else. Uh, these are interesting. Uh, often, if the opponent just comes in with Dawnblade, a good option can be to not block, and then maybe the you know maybe they're gonna play a uh, maybe they're gonna play a Glint, but you have to make him play it. In this case, he uh, just swings for three. I don't block. He buffs it with a Razor Reflex, going up to six. I'm like, okay, yep, nothing. And uh, then he also buffs it actually with an Out for Blood. So this is in some ways indicative of potentially a go tall deck instead of a go wide deck having the um, having these buffs, but it is actually a blue out for blood and not a red. So this ends up hitting me. He does hit me, I think, for seven damage here, and I think I and I think I'm like okay, you know that was a that was a hard hit initially, but you know that's okay. I'm gonna be able to do a big turn of my own. So right now I'm thinking that I have I believe I have a spoils of war in arsenal, so I can go with the. I can pitch the Singing Steel Blade to play Spoils of War and Swing, and then potentially pitch two cards and play that Command and Conquer if he still has a card in Arsenal. Uh, except, 
Okay, so he was. He, I think he was thinking about using his uh, refraction bolters there, but decided not to. And I do think deciding not to use the refraction bolters there is good. You often want to save that for when you're doing something really threatening, and he doesn't have the energy to do it unless he pitched that card instead of putting it in the arsenal. Um, additionally, you typically want to have blocked with your refraction bolters at least once before you actually... Uh, or I'm sorry, I said at least once, but it's only once. You can only block with it once. You usually want to have blocked with your refraction bolters before using it, though if you have an awesome opportunity, you may as well use it uh, regardless. Okay, uh, Bradley Yamrozik. My apologies if I mispronounced that. Thanks for the follow. Uh, also, Agar Flame, thanks for the follow. And Elaine Pbat, uh, who I have streamed before, actually not only followed but also subscribed with twitch prime so big shout out to elaine i'm not sure if he's watching this right now that may have been uh i think that was a, th a choice that he had made after i had streamed some of his games earlier so i don't know if he's watching this right now but shout out to you elaine i greatly appreciate you uh supporting the channel and additionally i uh i appreciate your your willingness to stick with the ranger even though it may not be the uh the strongest class out there it's uh, it's tough, you know. Ranger is a is a tough class to main, but Elaine is out there fighting the fighting the good fight. Okay, so uh, on this turn, I come in with the Spoils of War into Dawnblade Swing. Uh, my opponent has no defense against it, so I'm going to land a hit, getting two copper. Um, and I now have to think: Do I want to come in with the another sword swing, or do I want to go for the CNC? And I end up deciding that I want to go for the CNC. This does mean that I'm not going to have an opportunity to get another Dawnblade counter. But the Command and Conquer is going to force my opponent to lose cards one way or another. So either he's going to take this hit and lose the card that he has in Arsenal, or he's going to block and lose cards that he uses to block. Um, yeah, so he only has... In theory, there are some situations where someone can block this entirely with their armor, but this is not one of them. And actually, even if he had less life than me to get the two block out of his Skullcap, he would have to lose his Tunic to block all six, which would be extremely imprudent this early in the game. So this Command and Conquer, you know, I'm thinking, my opponent didn't block against my Spoils of War. I don't have an attack reaction that I can use to confirm a hit. So there's a high chance that he'll just be able to block me relatively easily. Even if I buff my attack with the Brave Forge Bracers, he can probably do one card plus a piece of equipment and shut me down. Uh, so instead, I'm going to come in with the CNC and try to force cards out of his hand and use that to limit whatever he has coming because he clearly is wanting to save some stuff. And actually, in this case, he blocks with one card from hand and then two pieces of, of equipment, which further indicates that he's trying to preserve an aggressive hand. Um, I'm a little worried about this, but on the plus side, I did do two pieces of equipment damage, which is usually pretty good to see this early on in the matchup. Um, in a, a, when you're playing against a warrior, equipment blocks can be pretty important because you can use those equipment blocks in order to stop attacks that are, um, stop attacks without activating reprise. So, re so the warrior class mechanic is reprise, which is a mechanic that applies to attack reactions, and it makes those reactions so that they have a bonus effect if the opponent has defended with a card from hand. And when you're playing against a warrior, playing a defense reaction from arsenal or blocking only with equipment is a good way to prevent your opponent from using that reprise mechanic and just kind of uh, just kind of forestall some of their options. Now, to be fair, a lot of people are still going to be playing with some cards that don't have reprise. So, for instance, that Razor Reflex that uh, Slide Mode played against me on the previous turn doesn't rely on reprise at all. So he was able to get the full effect out of that card, even though I didn't block from hand. But there are enough strong cards that do rely on reprise, uh, the most notable being Iron Song Response, which can't even be played if reprise isn't active, but also Singing Steel Blade, which requires it to do anything other than plus one stat for one, which is extremely inefficient if played without reprise. So because those things are, uh, because those things are factors and you have to think about how the... Um, what options they might have. In some cases, you might want to be defending against a warrior's Dawnblade attack only using your armor. And so his using it here for the CNC may have bought him more tempo for this turn, but I'm, I'm kind of happy to see the armor damage this early in the matchup. You often want to save that armor uh, either for allowing you to block something that is coming in at, at four or some other awkward number, or just to create a situation here where you're going to be able to block without trigger and reprise okay so he comes in with an e-strike now 
Yeast Strike is a very strong card for Warrior. Typically, you're going to see that being used for Yeast Strike 5 go again, though in some cases I have also gone for Yeast Strike 7. Um, in this case, it is, uh, is... I'm not entirely sure which one this is, actually. Just from memory, I don't... I think it might have been an Yeast Strike 7, but I don't fully recall. And, you know, all things considered, I'm actually pretty happy with that if that is Yeast Strike 7, because that's not as crazy a turn as it could be here. Um, but I might be misremembering. This could be Easter Strike 5 go again. Uh, in any case, I end up blocking with one card. Yeah, and it's Easter Strike 7. So I take four damage, uh, and I'm down one card, and I'm honestly totally fine with that. It looked like my opponent was saving stuff for a big turn, but but I guess actually he wasn't because all it was was that Easter Strike, uh, and he ended up not using one of the cards that he had in hand. He had the Easter Strike, and then he had the one card that was sent to the bottom because of the Easter Strike. But um, I, I'm actually totally fine with that, and I think it might have been better for him to block with the second card that he had in hand, though I'm not exactly sure what he had. But I would, given that he didn't end up using the card, I think it might have been better to go for a two-card block to shut down the CNC instead of doing one card plus the equipment, because the equipment damage is permanent, whereas you redraw. So on my turn here, I don't have an incredibly aggressive hand. Uh, I want to pitch my Iron Song Determination to get it later in the game. Since I only have the one copy of that card and I want to use it as a closer, I'm pitching it here because I think there's a good chance my opponent has defense reactions or in any case could defend with equipment. And I end up playing a Flock of the Feather Walkers, and that will give me this Quicken token. And it comes in for five. My opponent doesn't defend and takes five, so I land a, I land a solid hit while also giving myself a Quicken token for next turn. The problem being that my opponent now has a five card hand, or well, it's a four card hand plus one card in Arsenal, but the, but uh, Slidemo here has access to five cards with which to come in and get me. Now I do have a defense reaction in Arsenal, which is a good thing to have there with the copy of uh, Steel uh, Blue Steel Blade Shunt. So that can potentially be useful for shutting down some attacks. Maybe paired with armor, I can maybe even shut something down without enabling reprise. Um, however, my opponent knows that I have the blue shunt because I had to reveal it to use Flock of the Feather Walkers, so it's not as if it's going to be a big surprise. <laughs> and we'll see here what exactly he chooses to do. For offense, my hand is not amazing, but it's not terrible, so I think that in the dream where he does something non-aggressive and I get all my cards, you know, I could do pitch uh, pitch the yellow hit and run and swing with go again from the quicken token. If he blocks, I can potentially pitch the springboard somersault as well, play over power, then play the red hit and run and use tunic to swing for six on the second swing, which could be very annoying. But I think there's a high chance that I will end up having to use at least some of my stuff on the defense and won't be able to do that kind of huge turn that was being discussed there. Okay, so my opponent pitches a Warrior's Valor. And uh, it is a Warrior's Valor blue, so that's a good pitch card. I do highlight it there. And plays a Spoils of War. So he is now at strength 5 uh, with, a go, with an unconditional go again. And if he hits me, he'll get another 2 copper. Uh, he then goes on to play a Steel Blade Supremacy, going up to Strength 7. And then here is the Dawn Blade Swing coming in at Strength 7. Go again if he hits draw a card, and he does have 2 Copper on hit as well. Pretty scary, all things considered. Pretty scary. So this is a high priority block to... Uh, this is a high priority block because if he ends up landing a big hit on me here i'm going to be in a good amount of trouble simply because he will draw a card and be able to continue his aggression so let's see how i choose to de defend against this uh one good thing is that he doesn't have any energy which means that if he has an attack reaction that he has to pitch for he would have to have it in arsenal and then pitch his hand uh, from hand though i think his tunic is charged up so he could do that also uh, it's conceivable that in this situation I want to block for a total of 10. I think I think what I would do now, uh, looking at this, is block with uh, two cards from hand for six, and then one piece of equipment. Oh, you know what I do here? Okay, so I block with my skull cap for th uh, so I block for skull cap for two, uh, hit and run, and then the springboard somersault from hand. Okay, so that that is gonna block a total of seven, so it's a full block, and then I still have that shunt waiting if he does have an attack reaction. Okay. 
Yeah, so I was thinking that maybe I could uh, do a block with two cards from hand plus the bolters instead, but doing it this way is kind of nice, um, especially because I think there's a good chance that I would not be able to play all of the uh, all of the uh, play the springboard somersault in the optimal situation from Arsenal because if he doesn't have a reaction, I won't have the I will not have my copy of Steel Blade Shunt out of Arsenal. So then he comes in with a scar for a scar for four. It does not have go again since he since he has more life than me at this time. And under the circumstances, so it's quite possible that under this circumstance, I might want to use the Steel Blade Shunt to block it um, simply because I can then have a more efficient arsenal for next turn. But given the importance of defense reactions in this matchup, I end up just taking the damage. So I'm now down to 25 life to my opponent's 30. Uh, and I am a little bit on the back foot in some ways, uh, in terms of tempo, he's currently ahead, but I do have the defense reaction in Arsenal and the tunic charged up with which to play it, which is a situation I really like being in, in a warrior mirror. You know, often in this mirror, I want to set up my defense and get into a position where I know that I'm less likely to be taken by surprise by some attack reactions or similar, and then go from there to try to do some damage. So I end up pitching the blue overpower that i have there another card that i want to pitch and then play later on and i'm coming in with the dawn blade that has go again so it's strength three with go again and we'll see what my opponent has to do about it on the defense if he doesn't block this of course i'm going to be able to play the red hit and run just for the stats and then use my bolters or i'm sorry use my bracers and then swing at strength seven which is pretty scary so We'll see whether or not my opponent blocks this. Um, he doesn't, of course, know what the card in my hand is. It could be an attack reaction. Uh, there's an argument even for overblocking here in case it's an Iron Song response because it would be very awkward, but I think probably it's not really worth it to do that. I don't know. I think a, um, you know, we'll see what happens here. I think often against a hit and run Dawn Blade swing where it's just go again and no stats, or against a quick and token Dunblade swing, I think often one of the more efficient things to do can just be to block with a single card. And if they have to play an attack reaction, they might have relatively limited options, but it doesn't play into their hands in the event that they have a, um, it doesn't play into their hands in the event that they have a Command and Conquer or whatever, where if you block too heavily, you might be in big trouble. Uh, he actually pitches an E-Strike to play a yellow shunt. So I take one damage, but I'm kind of fine with this. Um, I think he got two cards out of his hand because he didn't use his tunic. I'm not actually sure why he didn't use his tunic. It is charged up. Um, often you want to use tunic to play e uh, to play a steel blade shunt because if you're using the tunic to play shunt instead of pitching a card from hand, you're es it's essentially card advantage is what it is. So if you have to pitch to play the shunt, Yes, you're going to get that card back because it's pitched and not discarded, so it's not like it's out of your deck. But at the same time, it is a situation where you're limiting your options for the next turn. And now it is possible, though, that he was pitching that uh, Enlightened Strike on purpose in order to try to maintain powerful threats later on in the game. Ah, uh, yeah, Gar Garnanana asks, what does the Tunic do? Yeah, so the Tunic, uh, I can't highlight it right now, unfortunately, because this is a video replay. It's not like an act It's not like in TTS. Um and I, I think Tunic is one of the cards I usually don't highlight anyway. Um, but any, I, I'm sorry, uh, that's a digression. Uh, Tunic, is a, Tunic is a card that is a legendary chest armor. And the way that it works is that at the start of your turn, you get a counter uh, if you have less than three counters. And once you have three counters, you can remove all three to gain one energy as an instant. So it's essentially charging up and then giving you energy for it that you can use at any time. And because the card that he played there, Steel Blade Shunt, costs one energy, in this case he had to pitch a card from his hand to play it instead of using the Tunic to play it, but he ended up using his Tunic on the next turn, so it's similar. However, if he had used the Tunic uh, to play the Steel Blade Shunt, he would have one charge on it this turn because it charges up at the start of the turn. So doing it this other way where he used the tunic second and pitched the card first means that his uh, tunic charge is slightly lower. And tunic is very commonly played. Some people consider it one of the best cards in the game. Um, 
And the fact that it gives you that energy that can just be, you know, it's only one point of energy, but across a game that can be, you know, many turns. If you have like a 15 turn game, you could in theory use your tunic five times. So, and that really adds up. It's like a nice incremental advantage. Also, uh, once things get really desperate, you can block with the tunic for one, one point of damage, but doing so destroys it. So if you're blocking with your tunic, that typically means things have gotten really desperate. Okay, so in this situation, my opponent attacked with a Dawnblade Swing. I didn't block. He hit me for three, at which point he used his uh, Refraction Bolters, which is a warrior item that you can... Br uh, it blocks for one, and then later you can break it in order to use... Uh, in order to go again after your sword attack hits. So he hit me with his sword, broke his Bolters for the go again. I block his attack for three. He plays an attack reaction, and then I hit him with the Steel Blade Shunt to stop his attack. And if you saw earlier, I took that die and moved it to the side from my tunic. That was, you know, my three charges being used to pay for the shunt so that I didn't have to pitch a card from hand. And he now plays a Glint the Quicksilver from Arsenal. Uh, so that's a warrior attack reaction that gives you go again. And additionally, it has reprise if the opponent has defended with a card from hand, draw a card. Uh, so he draws a card and he has go again. So if this next card is some kind of attack that he could throw out, he can play it right now. Or if it's like a potion or something like that that he can play, he could play it right now. But um, typically using Glint in this sort of situation where you're kind of relying on the top deck is, is not, I think, my favorite way to use it. I prefer to play it earlier in the turn in order to enable something that I know that I have. You know, sometimes the Glint top deck can be correct, but I prefer to save it. It's also possible that in this situation he wanted to play it to get Glint out of his arsenal and try to get a more aggressive card in there. You know, maybe he wanted to get an attack reaction into arsenal or otherwise pull something. Though if he drew an attack reaction, it would actually be pretty good to use it right here. And he does also take one damage because uh, the Steel Blade Shunt that I played not only defends for four, it also deals one damage to the opponent if they are attacking, if it's defending against a weapon attack. So... In a Warrior Mirror, Steel Blade Shunt is one of your best cards because the fact that it defends against a weapon attack means that it is going to be means that it's going to be very effective uh, since Warrior decks are so focused on attacking with their weapon instead of using cards. Whereas there's other characters that might be making more attacks with their cards and fewer with their weapon. Uh, for instance, Azalea the Ranger uh, has a weapon that can't attack at all. All it does is like set up her arrows. And so Steel Blade Shunt's a lot worse in that matchup. Okay, so uh, I'm leading off the turn with Scar for a Scar. So this is uh, Red Scar. It attacks for four. And because I am lower life than my opponent, it has Go Again. That's a very strong ability on Scar for a Scar. Uh, getting that Go Again if you have less life is a really nice way. It's kind of a comeback mechanic in some ways. And it can just be very threatening because it does cost zero. So it's cheap. It's, it's cheap and effective. Uh, definitely one of my... Definitely one of my favorite cards. I play this in a lot of different decks. Uh, and then I'm going to just follow up with a standard Dawnblade Swing here coming in for three. And probably put that Razor Reflex in my arsenal. Not the most threatening turn in the world, but I'm still chipping some damage away. And at this point, um, at this point I think that my opponent is a little bit ahead, I would say. Uh, you know, I have managed to stop some of his stop some of his bigger plays, but at the same time, you know, I have less life. I do have a better state of affairs with respect to my equipment than he does, so that's something good. But this is um, this is a situation where I, I have less life, and I think I have a bit more equipment block. But at the same time, you know, we're we're probably at a pretty similar total on life with him a little bit ahead. And he currently has some pretty good tempo. So after the, the Scar for a Scar, I come in with a Dawnblade Swing. He blocks with one card, and I'm not going to play that Razor. I'm going to save it for later when it can be more impactful, hopefully allowing me to get some kind of on-hit effect. And then I'm going to draw up. So this turn, I'm looking at the stuff that I have in hand, and I'm like, I don't have something here that's going to give my Dawnblade go again. Um, so I'm thinking of this as an opportunity where it might be a good time for me to block with my refraction bolters to use that uh, that one point of armor that they have before I potentially use them next turn to push my attack. So that's just one of those things where you have to kind of think ahead. You know, refraction bolters are an interesting item because there's sort of a 
there's sort of a tension between wanting to use the armor late so you can use it on something important and wanting to use the armor early so that you don't uh, end up using the card for its discard to go again ability before you've used the block. You always want to use that block first so that you're not wasting it by uh, when you do the go again. But then you kind of want to... Anyway, you, you kind of want to use the block early. You kind of want to use the block late to save it for something important. So my opponent plays a hit and run and a sharpened steel. The sharpened steel is just going to give his attack plus three. The hit and run will give it go again. So he is now coming in with a dawn blade at strength six with go again. Pretty scary. Pretty scary. And let's see what I do in response. So one thing that I could do here is I could defend with the route and Razor Reflex in my hand. That would be defending for five because Razor only blocks for two. And then take it up to six using the Refraction Bolters. Um, ooh, and I actually do something a little bolder. I go for a three, two, one block there with the skull cap for one, the bracers for two, and the wrap for three. Um, I think it may have been a little erroneous here not to use the bolters instead of the skull cap, but I guess I was trying to get that skull cap going. Uh, my opponent then plays a stroke of foresight, which is going to give him plus three damage, and it is going to let him. Actually, let's. Uh, or no, that's fine. It's going to come in for three damage and it is going to let him hit me uh, hit me with this attack, but also it is going to draw a card and then he can put a card from his hand on either the top or bottom of his deck. Um, in this case, because he only has the one card that he just drew, he'll have to send it to the top or bottom, but it will give him a little bit of nice filtering, as well as allowing him to score a hit for three. But because he used that, uh, he doesn't actually have any more resources. Um, so because that costs one to play, even though he has the go again, he can't come in with a second Dunblade swing because he's out of resources for now, which means that that's going to be all the damage I take, just that three damage. And while I would prefer not to take the three damage, it is still going to be okay. Now there's another thing that I could do here. So one thing that I could do is I could come in with a Dawnblade and try to confirm the hit with an attack reaction and then use my Bolters. Another thing that I could do, though, is play Snatch and pair it up with a Razor Reflex. So Snatch is a card that is... This is a red Snatch, so it's Strength 4. And if it hits, I will draw a card. So I could potentially play that and then hope to buff it with Razor Reflex, which would then give it plus three. And additionally, uh, if it hits, go again. So the, the combination of those two abilities could allow me to draw a card on hit and go again on hit and maybe surprise him. So yeah, I'm coming in. Uh, that is the attack that I'm going for. So snatch for four, and if it hits, draw a card. And I think this is probably why I didn't end up blocking with the bolters last time. I, th I think I must have seen this combo and been like, okay, I'm gonna try to get the, um, I'm gonna try to use Razor Reflex with Snatch and get not only the card draw but also the go again, get in there and then follow it up with some other attack. I'm not totally sure that's what I was thinking, but that definitely makes a lot of sense and also allows me to retain the refraction bolters until later. Uh, so my opponent responds to the snatch by playing another Steel Blade Shunt. Um, this is, I'm, I'm pretty happy about this because first off, he doesn't have three counters on his tunic, which means that he is going to have to pitch a card to play that Steel Blade Shunt. And then secondly, uh, it's not going to damage me. Um, and then third, I'm going to be able to use the Razor Reflex to get in unless he has some other defense reaction coming. Now he hasn't actually pitched to play for the shunt yet. Uh, this is a blue shunt, so it was blocking for four, so it would have blocked my attack completely. But then I'm going to come in with the Razor Reflex and go up to strength seven. So now I'm going to hit him for three, draw a card, and go again, unless he plays another defense reaction to try to shut me down. And if he does, I actually have another Razor Reflex in hand. So this is a pretty good situation for me. Um, people talk about uh, the Pummel and Command and Conquer combo, where those two cards go very well together because Command and Conquer will destroy the opponent's arsenal if it hits, and Pummel will buff it up and then also make it uh, make the opponent have to discard a card from hand if it hits. So the combination of those two is very strong. And then the, um, 
And then the Snatch and Razor Reflex combo is, in my opinion, kind of similar. Not probably as good, but it's still, you're getting the bonus damage, and then not only are you potentially getting the draw card, but you're also getting a go again, which you can then use to potentially use the card that you just drew. So pretty sweet combination. Okay, so he ends up pitching a, uh, he ends up pitching a Warrior's Valor, I believe, there. And, okay, so he took the damage, which caused me to draw a card. I draw a hit and run. I'm then going to play the hit and run and swing my Dawn Blade for a three with go again. And I do have a resource left that I can potentially use to make another swing if he doesn't stop this one. Uh, so I'm thinking right now what I probably want to do is if he doesn't stop me, I'll take another swing. And if he does stop me, I'm just going to put that Razor Reflex in Arsenal. So I still have the attack reaction waiting in Arsenal and potentially threatening some more damage. So th I'm feeling actually very happy about this turn. Um, I'm feeling very happy about this turn. And the reason that I'm feeling, uh, that I'm feeling so happy about it is because not only have I managed to do some damage, but I'm also, I've really regained a lot of tempo in this game because he has used two cards already to stop my um he's used two cards already to stop my uh to, to try and stop my attack earlier with the snatch in that he had to pitch a card to play for that steel blade uh to pay for that steel blade shunt and now my other attacks are threatening he'll probably have to defend some more he really doesn't want to let me get a second uh, a two hits with the dawn blade to get a plus one counter and he ends up blocking with two cards because those cards only block for two each. So I'm really happy about this situation. I've essentially retaken tempo completely. Uh, so I was having a little trouble. If, if you see that in the chat, I say, I think you can't hear me, but I can still hit you, hear you. Uh, so he blocks for four. Um, now, one thing is I think it might have been better for him if he had decided to pitch one of those cards that only blocked for two to play for the steel, to pay for the steel blade shunt, because then he would have been able to uh, block it com this attack completely with one card instead of having to use two. He also could conceivably have used one of the cards plus a piece of equipment here, but I think he may be trying to conserve his equipment blocks for later, especially given that neither of those cards are very good on their own. So his next turn was going to be kind of bad either way. But if he had kept one of them, he at least could have put it in an arsenal without doing anything or pitched it and taken a swing. In, I, in, in any case though, he ends up, he did have to block it completely. Uh, so I'm not gonna be able to get another attack to use that go again for my hit and run, but I'm also quite fine with this situation because I have used up my opponent's whole hand. I put the Razor Reflex in Arsenal and I draw up. On his turn, he has no cards and his tunic isn't charged up. So he is not gonna be able to do anything on his end. All he's gonna be able to do is draw up and pass back to me. So now I'm very, I'm very happy with this state of affairs because we just went into a scenario where I now have a big advantage on tempo. But what I'm not happy with is that I have a hand of all reds. So this is not going to be the best hand that I could ever have. But it does have this uh, scar for a scar, which we discussed earlier, strength four. And if you have less life than your opponent, it has go again. So I'll play the scar for a scar, and then probably I'll pitch something that I have in hand or maybe use my tunic to throw out a dawn blade swing, maybe buff it with one of the one of those razors. I would actually like to play the razor that I have in Arsenal this turn so that I can put one of the red copies of Steel Blade Shunt into my Arsenal. That's a really good card to have in Arsenal against a warrior because it blocks for six with the red version and will do a damage if the opponent attacked if it's blocking a weapon. So that can actually shut down even a buffed Dawnblade attack on its own, and if you're playing it from Arsenal, it's going to prevent them from having reprise. So very strong card in this matchup, and we'll see what happens here. So the Scar for a Scar coming in. And it's interesting also just how much tempo can matter in this game. So I was mentioning earlier that I felt like I was a bit behind, but with that turn where I regained so much tempo, I now feel like I'm definitely ahead. Uh, in the in terms of life, we now have even overall life, um, and I think he has a little bit more armor left than me, but I currently have the initiative, so to speak.
Yeah, so then this Dawn Blade Swing is coming in for three. Uh, if my opponent doesn't block, I will probably pitch the Razor Reflex that I have in hand to play the one in Arsenal, and then I can put the Red Steel Blade shut in Arsenal and be set up in a great spot for defense. And yeah, that's exactly what I do. So he says no block, and then I say, okay, you know, Razor from, Razor from Arsenal. Go up to six. Often you don't want to be playing these attack reactions just to do more damage. You often want to be using them to confirm an on-hit effect. But in this situation, I'm fine with playing it because it will open Arsenal and allow me to put that Red Steel Blade Shunt into Arsenal, which is going to be a great defensive option for the future, With especially with my Tunic charged up so I can play it without pitching another card. And then I will additionally draw four cards. So I'm very happy with that outcome. And he doesn't have a defense reaction that he's going to play here. Now, he does have a four-card hand, which is kind of scary. Uh, this could be him trying to retake tempo by not defending and instead just taking a bunch of damage. I reorder my pitch zone to make it so that the Razor Reflex is on top, since I'm, I'm thinking that that's probably going to be something that I'm going to want to see before I see that second red shunt. And then now it's going to be his turn. So he is now at 12 life to my 18. Uh, so he is significantly behind on life even with the armor advantage that he has i believe that he has either one or two more pips of armor depending on how he uses that skull cap um technically i guess he could only block with the skull cap once and then it would only be one point of armor and we would actually be even but uh even if he gets the max value out of the skull cap i'm still ahead of him overall and he has four cards in hand so he is going to be able to do a big attack but I'm hoping that the Steel Blade Shunt that I have in Arsenal is going to be just what I need to prevent that big attack from landing much damage. Sharpened Steel being played here to buff up his next Dawnblade attack. Red Sharpened Steel, then your next weapon attack this turn gains plus three. Pitch is a, I believe that's a Pursuit of Knowledge. So I'm just pausing for a second. Pursuit of Knowledge is not that commonly seen a card. It's actually really cool if you can hit with it. Uh, it gives your hero plus one intellect until end of turn, which means that you're going to draw up to five cards at the end of the turn instead of four. So this is like a card advantage card. Um, the problem with, that I have with it, it, de it, it, and it's also blue, which is pretty sweet. So it's a blue that hits for four and has a good on hit effect. That sounds really good. The problem is that it costs two, so that's pretty expensive. Um, you ideally want to be playing this at the end of a big combo of a bunch of things, uh, and the fact that it costs two makes it harder to do that. And then it also only blocks for two. So this card is like right on the cusp of being a card that I really want. I've thought about putting it into my deck, and I've considered it, and I know some other warriors have had success with it. I believe the player who came in second at the uh, Taiwanese Nationals was using this card. Um, but for me, the fact that it only blocks for two instead of three is like the decisive factor. If this card blocked for three, I probably would be playing it. But since it only blocks for two, I'm not, you know, I'm not currently running it. Though I should do some testing and maybe I'll change my mind on that. Anyway, it's a cool card. In this case, it's being pitched for three to fuel my opponent's turn. Let's get back to the action. So he pitches that uh, and then he's, so he's going really big here. He plays a Dauntless as well. Uh, it's going to be a blue Dauntless. So that's going to be a further plus one and my first defense reaction that I play this turn costs an additional point of energy, which is very annoying because it does mean that I'm not... Yeah, so here, let's look at Dauntless. So your next weapon attack this turn gains plus one because this is the blue version. The red version is plus three. And the next defense reaction card the defending hero plays this turn costs an additional one energy to play. And then it also has go again. Uh, so that's Dauntless, pretty strong card. And it's going to be annoying for me in this situation because I do have that defense reaction I would normally like to play. So then he's coming in for a total of seven damage. He doesn't have any sort of go again on this attack, uh, though it's conceivable that he has a Glint the Quicksilver in hand. One option would be to just do a standard block, like maybe just block with that Twinning Blade, take some damage, block, maybe even block with the Twinning Blade plus the Singing Steel Blade. Uh, say, okay, I'm taking one, you know, what of it? We'll see what I end up doing here. Another option would be to be like, ugh, fine, you got the Dauntless. I guess I'll pitch, you know, I guess I'll have to pitch a card to play that Steel Blade Shunt after all. Can't just use the Tunic, whatever. Um, let's see what I do here. I actually don't remember how, what my play is this turn. Oh man, I'm going bold. I actually say, you know, I'll take seven. No defense whatsoever. 
That does put me in a better spot if he does have the Glint the Quicksilver in hand because it means that he won't get the bonus card from it. Um, but yeah, so going bold there. No blocks. And I think the reason that I do this is because I have a pretty aggressive hand. So I can do... Um, I can pitch the blue Steel Blade Shunt that I have in hand, play Spoils of War. Oh yeah, okay, so he reacts to that with a blue Out for Blood, which in this case is just another one damage, and I'm like, fine. One damage hit me. So he actually hits me for, I believe, eight this turn. Yeah, I went from 18 to 10. But I'm fine with that, you know. This is one of those situations where, yeah, he scored a fair chunk of damage, but he also just used all those cards, doesn't have something in Arsenal, and I have a big attack prepared for him on this next turn. I often think in this game, tempo is more important than damage, and taking that damage has let me gain a lot of tempo. Now let's see if I can put enough pressure on him that I can maintain the aggression and be in a strong spot. So I'm going to play the Spoils of War, pitch the blue Steel Blade Shunt, and come in with a Dawnblade Swing for five with Go Again, and if it hits, I will draw a card. Or, I'm sorry, five with Go Again, and if it hits, I will get two Copper Tokens. I had it mixed up there. This is the type of situation where that pursuit of knowledge would be really good, by the way. So if I had one of those, if I had like pursuit of knowledge in hand instead of one of these cards, I could do this swing for five with go again, and then if he stops me, I can then play the pursuit of knowledge from hand and threaten him for the additional four, and potentially give myself an extra card for next turn if it lands, which would be really annoying for my opponent. I feel, um, yeah. Ah, yeah, man. Pursuit of Knowledge is so close to being a card that I really want. I think if it either cost one... Yeah, I mean, if it cost one, it would be very, very strong. But if it either cost one or blocked for three, I think I would be playing it. Um, but at two cost and two block, it's not quite there, I feel, though I do need to test it more. Okay, so my opponent is now thinking about how he wants to defend against this. Um, so the way that the, the warrior like play pattern works is that Dorinthia will allow you to get a second, uh, she'll allow you to get a second attack with your Dawnblade if the first one hits, but if the first attack doesn't hit, the opponent is, go uh, the ability won't go off and you won't be able to get that second attack. So because of that, um, you sometimes need to use attack reactions to get in over your opponent's defense. So in this case, my opponent blocks for six. And I respond by playing a Singing Steel Blade, which is going to give me plus one, but also let me search for any other attack reaction and banish it, and then have the option to play that as well during this chain link. Um, and that's going to, in this case, I'm going to find an Iron Song Response Red, uh, which is zero for plus three uh, with Reprise. And so this is a nice combo here where it allows me to with those two cards played together, they both need Reprise to do their full effect, but because I have Reprise, I can combo those two together and pay just one energy in order to get plus four. Okay, so now he blocked for six against my five, and I gave it plus four, so I'm now at strength nine to his six, which means I'm gonna get in and hit him for three. And I do get in and hit him for three. And then this is a great opportunity here, I think, to... I get the two copper tokens as well. And then I'm going to pitch this 20 blade I have in hand for two energy, use my bracers, and swing again. So now the bracers are... You can use them. You can If you've already hit with a weapon in the turn, you can pay one energy to give your next weapon attack plus one. So I do that, and now I'm coming in with the dumb blade for four. And if this hits, I'm going to get a plus one counter on it. Um which would put me in quite a strong spot. So coming in for four, and my opponent blocks for three, and he's going to add his, uh, he's going to add, he actually over blocks here with his equipment. So he's going to, he, I believe he actually blocks this for six. And this is a very, uh, very conservative move, but it does mean that if I have an Iron Song response red in Arsenal, I won't be able to use it in order to score the hit. Um, I do think that's a little bit of a mistake because I... Well, I guess I could also have had a Razor in Arsenal, actually. Um, but I do think that it's possible that if I had had an attack reaction in Arsenal, I might have used that one instead of using the Singing Steel Blade. 
um, depending on what it was. So it's hard to tell exactly. It's it's hard to tell sometimes what an, an enemy warrior is going to do. But I think in this situation, he may have thought I was going for. I had like another trick coming, which I in fact did not. I'm now thinking that this is a very very favorable situation for me in this game. Uh, so my opponent is now quite low on life. I have a full hand. I have a card in Arsenal that's going to allow me to shut down almost any attack that he does that seriously threatens me. And because of that, I can afford to just throw out these big attacks. He only has one card here, so he might just have a pitch and swing. He actually has a red sigil of solace, which is just gain three life as an instant. So he just heals up. That does take him out of the uh, that does take him out of the danger zone a bit, but overall it's not an aggressive thing to do, and it means that I'm going to get, be able to maintain my tempo as much as possible. So I play a ravenous rebel, uh, which is going to reveal my top card and lose strength equal to that card's cost. So this is uh, reveal the top card of your deck, and it gets minus X, where X is that card's pitch value. Unfortunately, I hit a blue card with it, which means this card is minus three. Uh, and it's going to come in for just two damage with go again. Now, if I had hit a red, I would immediately have played the second Ravenous Rabble that I have in hand. But because it was a blue that I hit instead, uh, I just I know that this next one is going to be relatively weak. And so I think I may end up pitching this for a Dawnblade Swing, which I hope to buff with Glint rather than using it for another attack. Whereas if I had flipped a red where the attack of the Ravenous Rabble was only getting minus one damage, I probably would have just played the second Ravenous Rabble immediately. So I end up pitching that Ravenous Rabble instead, and then here comes the Dawnblade Swing coming in for three damage. And if my opponent blocks from hand, I'm going to be able to play that Glint the Quicksilver to not only get go again, but also draw a card. Which is a pretty sweet situation to be in. If he doesn't block from hand, I could still potentially play the glint, or maybe I could even use the um, I could even use my refraction bolters to get the go again, break them. It would waste the point of armor that they have, but it might be a good play. Uh, so he's going to be conservative here, and he double blocks me. Uh, so because he's double blocked, I'm not going to be able to get in uh, unless I glint and draw a powerful reaction. So I could go for the glint here and hope to top deck a strong attack reaction or a card that I could play after the attack. Um, but I actually know what's on the top of the deck. It's that overpower, which I saw from Ravenous Rabble. So there's no reason to do a glint for the top deck because while overpower is a strong attack reaction, it also costs three, which is definitely not something that I have. So I'm going to be content with having made him block heavily. Did he triple block that? He made it... He might have actually triple blocked that. I'm going to rewind for a sec. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so yeah, I, I, I just want to see what happened because it looked like he only had one card at the end of that turn and put it into Arsenal. I had thought it was going to be a double block, which is itself an overblock, but maybe it was a triple block. Let's, let's see what he does here. Okay, one block, two block. It looks like it's just a double block. Hmm. Oh, that's it. Okay, so before he puts the card in Arsenal, he actually plays a second copy of Sigil of Solace, and he heals three life again. Okay, so, you know, with that healing, he's now ahead of me on life, but again, he's way behind on tempo, so I'm fine with him taking these heals if they're not getting him into a stronger position in the immediate term. I'm happy to have the tempo advantage, even if I don't have the life advantage, and keep swinging big. So in this case, I'm going to pitch that blue over power that I drew, swing the Dawnblade, and my attack plan here is to use the glint, the Quicksilver here to get go again, and then play the Command and Conqueror that I have in my hand afterwards, especially if he still has a card in Arsenal. And Command and Conquer is just one of the strongest attacks in the game with the strength six. You know, that's not a huge number. But the fact that it can't have defense reactions used against it and it threatens to destroy your opponent's arsenal is just so threatening. Command and Conquer really is one of the best cards in the game, in my opinion. Alright, so my opponent thinking about what to do against this Dawnblade swing. Often if the opponent swings a Dawnblade like this, you might just want to take the damage. And yeah, he says no block. I play the Glint. Uh, he takes the three damage. 
So the reason that you might sometimes just say no block against this is because if the opponent swings the Dawn Blade and they don't have a go again from some effect, that might mean that if they if they uh, don't have the glint, you're going to make them use their bracers, or I'm sorry, make them destroy their bolters. If they do have the glint, they're going to play it, but because they don't have their appraise enabled, it's going to be weaker. However, in this case, I'm totally happy to play the glint and then follow up with a command and conquer. That's a pretty strong situation for me, I feel. And now my opponent is going to have to decide what they want to do against this Command and Conquer. Now I could have also decided to go in with a Dawnblade Swing for 4 and tried to buff it with my Razor Reflex to get in over his block and get the plus 1. But because I think that maintaining tempo is quite important, I'm going to use the Command and Conquer instead. Because as I mentioned earlier when I was playing this card, uh, Command and Conquer is almost always going to be costing your opponent at least one card and frequently more. So I'm just trying to make sure, you know, maybe my opponent has a quite aggressive hand. At this point, I'm really focused on maintaining my tempo. And I want to throw out that CNC, threaten the card that he has in Arsenal, and probably get a two-card block out of him, which will then put him with only two cards in hand and one in Arsenal, probably not enough to get past my defense, especially given that I have that red steel blade shunt still waiting in my own Arsenal to surprise the opponent. What do we got here? Oh, in chat we have a uh, we have a Russian spammer banned. All right. Well, I was banning the Russian spammer. Uh, let's. The video was just my opponent thinking more about his decision, and so it it can be the case that in these sorts of situations you may well want to make careful consideration of what you're doing. Um, both players are relatively low on life at this point, and it's important to make good choices. The game is coming down to the wire. It does end up being a double block from my opponent. Um, and this is, uh, this is pretty reasonable. You know, most of the time, a warrior deck is not going to be running Pummel or Lunging Press, which could be used to buff the Command and Conquer. It's usually just going to be that six damage, so a two-card block is going to be fine most of the time. Though I have at times run a cheeky 1x lunging press just to sneak in for, to hit for one with Command and Conquer. Although at that time I was also running Life for a Life, which has a relevant on-hit effect. So I think that, um, yeah, to be, to be fair, it was a little better in that version of the deck. Okay, so now my opponent attacks with Snatch. So Snatch coming in for four. That's that same card that I was discussing earlier. If it hits, draw a card. And in this situation, I think what I'm going to do is block for one. And the reason that I say that is that if I, 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 or I don't know if I actually do it, but what I should do is block for one with bracers only. Yeah, and that is what I do. Because now if he plays that razor reflex to go up to seven and if it hits draw a card, I can use my tunic to use the steel blade shunt from Arsenal and shut down the attack. So he ends up not doing that. And uh, so he deals three damage and draws a card. And the reason that I'm I'm just fine with that, though, is that he's not really going to get a chance to do very much with this card in all likelihood because he draws it, but he doesn't have go again, so it's just the end of his turn anyway. And because you draw up to your maximum hand size at the end of each turn in this game, uh, it ends up being a situation where a card draw that doesn't have go again and doesn't draw like some instant or whatever is often just going to be wasted. You know, there's just not very much that he can do with it. Uh, and as a result, I was fine with taking that damage. And the reason that I blocked for the one there is because if he had buffed it with a red razor to get out, go up to seven, I could have played the steel blade shunt that I had in Arsenal, blocked seven, shut that down completely, and been safe. Whereas if I had not blocked for one, I would have been in that situation where he would be able to sneak in for one damage over my defense, then get the card draw and get the go again. And if you do get the go again, it becomes a lot more valuable. Okay, so I play a Scar for a Scar for four with Go Again, since I am lower life than my opponent. Uh, he counters it with a Springboard Somersault from Arsenal, blocking for all four. And then I'm going to pitch a Singing Steel Blade and come in for three with my own Dawn Blade. I'm taking a look at my Arsenal here. Uh, I think I was looking at how many Scar for a Scars I had already played. And I believe I have now played all three. Scar is a pretty strong card, uh, so I'm you know sad to see that all of those have been used up. It's it's really one of the stronger cards I think for this uh, for the way that this deck often wants to play. So I'm trying to go pretty wide and do multiple attacks in a turn to make it harder for my opponent to determine what to do. There's kind of two main attack patterns for warrior. There's wide warrior and there's tall warrior. 
So Wide Warrior is going to try to do multiple attacks in a turn and use that in order to overwhelm the opponent and make it harder for them to tell how to defend. Tall Warrior is going to try to make, uh, you know, one or two highly buffed attacks. Okay, so my opponent... Actually, I believe triple blocks this because he's blocking with cards that block for two. So he's blocking for six total. And I'm fine with that. You know, I'm not going to play the reactions that I have in hand. I'm just going to say, okay, you know, I'll block this out and, you know, come come get me next turn. I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm really fine with these situations where he's using all this stuff to defend and not necessarily getting anything immediate out of it just because... I am focused on the tempo situation. On his turn, all he does is arsenal. I'm going to throw out a Dawnblade Swing for three. Uh, I have two copies of Glint the Quicksilver in my hand, which is not optimal. You know, typically you're only going to want to use one of those in a turn, but we'll see what happens here. Um, I could definitely, I definitely am thinking that I want to play this Glint the Quicksilver regardless of if he defends or does not defend, which will then allow me to go again and probably just take another Dawnblade Swing. I do also have that Razor Reflex, which I can potentially use to try to get past his block if he doesn't overblock, though he has been very conservative with the defense, blocking quite heavily in several of these things. Uh, so I do a quick search there to see... I'm looking at my attacks, so I quickly search to see how many Enlightened Strikes, uh, how many uh, copies of Snatch, and I forget what the other one was. I have not seen any... Uh, I have not actually seen any Enlightened Strikes yet, which is unusual. Unusual. Uh, Rave when the red in chat says that two block cards can be so punishing. Yeah. So especially against warrior, it can be really rough to have cards that only block for two. So my opponent declares no block and I play a glint, the quicksilver three damage gets in. I don't get the card draw because reprise wasn't enabled, but this is going to put me in a position where now I use my brave forge bracers to get the plus one to my next attack. Then I pitch the second glint, the quicksilver that I had in hand and swing for four. Uh, and if this one hits, it is going to give me the plus one counter. I do still have that razor reflex as well. So this is a situation where my opponent has, you know, my opponent didn't block that. And if I hadn't had the glint and didn't use my bolters, he would have gained a lot of tempo. But because I do have the glint, he's probably going to want to defend against this unless he has like a totally ultimate turn and he thinks he can kill me. Um, it's pretty important to defend against this because you really don't want to give the opponent the plus one block. But yeah, as uh, Rave when the Red said, uh, the two block cards can be so punishing, especially against Warrior. It's really dangerous because Warrior has so many dangerous on hit effects. Um, and you might want to over block against them. You know, I actually have a fair few two block cards in my deck. Like this Razor Reflex that I have in hand is two block. But if you have a handful of two blocks, it can really be very awkward. And I try to limit that to an extent which is, as I was mentioning earlier, one of the main reasons that I'm not playing that Pursuit of Knowledge. You know, I would like to be playing it. Actually, I think it's a really cool card, but I don't want to be playing that many two-block cards in the deck. If it had three-block, it would probably be in there, but at two-block, it's just not quite, not quite the thing. So my opponent goes for the double block here. So once again, he's over-blocking me. He blocks for six. The reason that he's doing these over-blocks is because, because he has blocked for six, um he is going to try to prevent me from hitting him if i use a attack reaction but in this situation the overblock to six is not quite enough because with the brave forge bolter is buff my dawn blade was actually coming in at strength four so then i play the razor reflex that i have in hand it's now my seven to his six which means that i'm going to hit him for one damage and like often it wouldn't be worth it to play this card just to get one damage but because this is the second dawn blade swing that will hit this turn, I'm going to hit him for one and then get my plus one counter on my Dawn Blade, which is going to put me at uh, strength four for the next turn. And I wrote an article about this a while back, but four is like a critical break point in this game where if you're hitting someone for four, because normal cards only block for three, going from three to four it makes your attack much more annoying to stop completely because now a, a single standard card uh, will not block it and they could block it if they had a defense reaction that defends for four or more but normally a strength four attack is going to be quite quite difficult to block uh, relative to a strength three attack and that's why we're seeing you know both of us are using the red copies of cards like scar for a scar and snatch because those copies do attack at strength four which does make them a lot harder to defend against 
the yellow the yellow or blue copies which are only going to attack for two or three can be blocked much more easily so you know my opponent does have have a few cards this turn uh didn't lose quite as much tempo as he did earlier on some of those turns from blocking but this time uh, i have the dawn blade counter for the plus one and i have a full hand and i still have that red steel blade shunt waiting in an arsenal now you might say well you have that card in arsenal and you haven't been using it all game and you've been taking a bunch of hits and stuff why haven't you played that already so the reason is um against warrior you're only really secure if you have a strong defense uh if you have strong defense reaction stuff available in my opinion and so he's going to pitch a blue warrior's valor uh he plays a red warrior's valor i think it was a red and he plays a hit and run or i'm sorry a spoils of war and now he's going to swing so this is actually not all that good. So it's coming in for eight, and it has go again. But the problem with this is that he spent all his energy playing these three buffs, so he won't actually have the energy to... He doesn't actually have the energy here to do another attack, even though he has the go again. So he's kind, he's kind of overdoing it in a sense. It might be better to just do the Red Warrior's Valor and swing, and then put the card... And then put the Spoilers of War into Arsenal. I think that would have been a better play. Uh, so I end up deciding I'm going to block. So I'm being really, really, really um, aggressive in some ways here. Uh, I actually don't think I should have blocked with this tunic. I think that was silly um, because... Oh, you know what? His tunic is charged. That's what it is. So the reason that he played both of those things is because his tunic was charged up. So he could have used his tunic to hit me if he had scored, uh, if he had scored this hit. And I decide to block with my uh, bolter is my tunic and finally the red uh, steel blade shunt. So I block all eight. And by doing this, I keep a full hand that I'm that's going to allow me to be aggressive. Because looking at my hand, I see that I have the infamous Iron Song Determination that I pitched earlier to try to get in the late game when it's going to be more valuable. And this is the situation where it's going to be more valuable because my opponent does not have any cards in Arsenal. So there's no chance of a defense reaction in Arsenal. His armor is pretty beat up. And I play the Iron Song Determination for plus one strength and dominate. And now I'm coming in with the Dawnblade attack here for with plus one strength and dominate. This is coming in at strength five with dominate. I still have those refraction bolters that I can break to give it go again, assuming that I hit the target. And in hand, I have the ability to play a blue overpower, which could potentially come in there for an additional plus four. And so this is a really threatening hand and in fact, conceivably lethal which is why I ended up doing that big defense, including my tunic, even though it didn't necessarily seem like a situation where I totally needed to use the tunic. When you use your tunic to block, that's like saying, okay, you know, it's on. Either, either I need to do this because I'm about to die, or I need to do this in order to get some kind of tempo advantage that is super critical to winning the game. Because once you've blocked with that tunic, you're no longer uh, accumulating resources as, as efficiently as your opponent. And that can be a big disadvantage across a bunch of turns. So it's really something you only want to do as last resort. Uh, my opponent's going to go for a single block here. So currently I am landing this hit. Uh, I'm currently landing this hit for two damage and I'll be able to break my refraction bolters and swing again. So I am pretty fine with this situation. Uh, I could play the I could play the blue overpower and it would actually be lethal here. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is wait for the second attack and use the uh, bracers and yeah, I think I'm going to use the bracers, swing in again after breaking bolters, and then come in with the uh, come in with the second attack with the overpower waiting there. Uh, Raven the Red says, "Great showing for Iron Song Determination this turn." Yeah, so I mentioned it earlier when I first saw that Iron Song Determination. That's really a card that I want to pitch early on in the game so that I can then play it later when it's going to be more impactful. And this is just that sort of situation. Playing that Iron Song Determination late in the game when my opponent's armor is mostly depleted, it's going to be very threatening to him in this situation because it has Dominate and he can't defend with multiple cards from hand. You know, it was also an extra lucky time for it to show up because it showed up when I had the plus one counter on my Dawnblade, which is making it just that much harder to defend against. Now, this attack... I think it's at least conceivable that my opponent should be blocking this with his own tunic and his skullcap. 
because that would allow him to block for five and it would stop my attack if I don't have an attack reaction. Whereas with this block, it's guaranteed to hit, which means that uh, unless I go crazy and don't use my refraction bolters here, uh, it's going to be a situation where I'm going to get another attack. And he does go for it. He's like, okay, I've got to try and stop him. There is, I'm going to do the full block. There's the skull cap and the tunic. He's blocking for five. And I pitch the blue iron song response and play the blue overpower. And I'm cut and the overpower is plus two. And then it's an additional plus two. If the opponent has defended with a card from hand with its reprise. And so this is actually plus four. So now I'm going to hit him for four damage. And then I'm going to be able to use my bolters. I'm going to be able to use my bolters and swing again. Uh, and we're, we've been having a little bit of technical difficulties with the uh, Discord. There have been some problems with that. Uh, so we were just troubleshooting that quickly. I do think this is going to end up being the end of the game, though. Because with this, uh, with this blue overpower... And blue overpower, another one of those cards you want to pitch early, comes comes to you late in the game, and then it's going to be very threatening late in the game. And additionally, uh, as you play out the game, your pitch values tend to become more and more blue because you're going to typically be playing your stronger attacks and pitching with your blue cards, which means the blue cards will be coming back and the other ones might not. And as a result of that, having a card, an expensive card like the overpower, uh, that is going to be pitched early and then played late when you have more resources with which to likely play it. That's just like very synergistic. Okay. So I think we probably worked out the glitches. So yeah, I'm coming in here. Uh, you know, I have, I'm going up to strength nine with that blue over power. My opponent's only blocking for five. He can't block with it. Even if he has a defense reaction in hand, he can't use it because this attack has dominate. So he's going to take, he's probably going to take four damage here and go to one, uh, which then means that I can use my, use my bolters, use my bracers, come in for six with dominate, and that'll probably end the game. Yep, I break the, I break the refraction bolters for the plus one attack on hit. Use the bracers and swing for six with dominate because the plus one and dominate lasts for the whole turn. So unless he has a red shunt in hand, uh, that is the game. Uh, actually, he could also have like multiple healing cards in hand, or like block with a block with something and play a red sigil of solace. Um, but unless he has something special, he is not going to be able to do this. And also, if he does have the one block and then the heal, uh, he's still going to take three damage, which means it will be two Dawnblade hits, which means my Dawnblade will get a second plus one counter and become even tougher for him to deal with. So he. He is in a very bad position unless he has a red unless he has a red steel blade shut in hand, and even then he's in a pretty bad position because you don't want to go to one life against a warrior. Um, the reason I say that you don't want to go to one life against a warrior is because the steel blade shunt uh, can deal one damage if it apply if it defends a weapon attack, and the damage damage dealt by defense reactions cannot be stopped by normal things. There's a few cards that can block it. There's some defensive auras that can block it. I think. Uh, or at least Enchanting Melody can block it. Um, I think maybe one of the Mechanologist defensive items can block it, though I'm not sure. Bonehead Barrier can block it, and you can heal your way out of the instant death range, but you can't block with uh, you can't block it with normal cards. So, like, if my deck right here is at one life against a warrior, there's absolutely nothing I can do against Steel Blade Shunt. There's no cards in the deck at all that help against it. So I have to either not attack with my weapon, which puts me at a big disadvantage, or uh, just risk getting killed by that steel blade shunt. You really don't want to drop to one one life against a warrior or to two life against a brute because they have a defense reaction reckless swing, which can deal two damage. So I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. The um, I think you know maybe he's just you know carefully reviewing what he has, thinking, trying to make sure you know is there anything else that I have. They could possibly stop this. This is the finals, so I don't, you know, I don't blame don't blame anybody for being thorough in the finals. But I think this is actually going to be, I think this is going to be the game. I don't think he has a response that would allow him to live through the buffed and the buffed up Dawnblade here, that is coming in not only with the base strength plus the counter for four, but also with the 
do, uh, dominate and plus one from iron song determination for five and then also with the brave forge bracer is up to six and yeah i believe this is i believe this is the end of the game with that strength six dominated attack getting through my opponent's defenses and closing things out so yeah that was the um that was the that was the game that was the finals of the first uk online league uh ended up with a warrior mirror in the finals and i thought it was a pretty interesting game you know early on i felt like i was definitely you know i was definitely more on the defensive a bit i felt like i had a disadvantage but i managed to retake the tempo and come back swinging and end up taking the game so yeah that's gonna do it for this broadcast guys that was the uh that was the uk finals with myself versus slide mo I did end up prevailing there with a pretty sweet Iron Song determination play at the end of the game. So, yep, that is uh, that's going to be that for this broadcast, guys. On uh, on Thursday, I'm going to have a. I believe I currently believe I'm going to be showing myself playing a playing Ninja against Warrior. Um, Ninja is definitely a class that a lot of people consider to have a hard matchup against Warrior, and I have sort of an experimental deck that I've been working on where it's sort of a mix of it's kind of a mixed style where it's an aggressive deck it's not one of the like real fatigue control decks but it has the option to shift into a more defensive stance against warrior in particular and i had i think it was actually three quite quick games where each game was like you know maybe 20 or 30 minutes if that and so on Thursday, I'm going to be playing those, and you'll see me testing out this new build against a warrior, and you'll see whether or not the uh, the new strategy that I've devised is able to pull it together and get the win, uh, get get some wins against a warrior opponent, which is cons uh, traditionally considered a pretty tough matchup for ninja. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my that's going to be my scheduled stream on Thursday. I think that. Uh, Aside from that, there's a fair chance I'll do unscheduled streams with respect to any cool games that come up. There is also a UK online tournament. It's going to be a welcome to it's going to be a welcome to Wraith uh, simulated sealed tournament. So the Flesh and Blood OSC plugin on Tabletop Simulator has a thing that allows you to simulate drawing a uh, drawing uh, booster packs with which to play like draft or limited. And I think we're going to do a uh, we're going to do a simulated sealed event for the um, for Welcome to Wraith, and it's going to be run as an armory event from one of the stores in the UK. Uh, so that should be that should be a lot of fun, and I think I'm going to be playing in that. But if I get knocked out, I will probably try and cast the semifinals and or the finals. So yeah, it should be it should be an interesting time. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this broadcast. Thanks to you guys for watching, and uh, I will be back later with some more Flesh and Blood content, maybe some Star Wars Legion too. You know, we'll see. I haven't totally forgotten about Legion. I played a Legion game earlier today, but Flesh and Blood is definitely the uh, the main game for me right now. So thanks again for watching, and we'll be back later with some uh, some more Flesh and Blood.